What's up everyone, Jason here with PyQuant News. Super excited to bring you a new library that I've been looking at called SK Folio. SK Folio brings together scikit-learn optimization along with some investment portfolio routines to make a single library to do all this hard work for us. So let's see how it all works. First off, we're gonna use OpenBB to get some data and let's make the imports. So you can see we have a Plotly import and Plotly is a charting library. Uh, very cool to give us some dynamic and um, illustrative charts. We then bring in SK Learn for a train test split. So what this will do is it will take sections of our data for training, for testing, and then it will use that to optimize our, our uh, parameters. We then bring in SK Folio, a couple imports here for population, and then we're going to look at three different optimization techniques and then look at the returns of each of those techniques. So an equal weighted return, a maximum diversification return, and a random return. I'm starting to come to the conclusion that uh, maximum diversification is not always the best for the health of your portfolio. I'm starting to prefer very concentrated positions in some assets that I have high conviction in. Uh, we'll see what, what bears. Uh, and then finally, we'll use a pre-processing method here to just convert prices to returns and of course, OpenBB for data. So once we import that, let's just create a list of sectors, okay? So this is, I just took this, I think I took this from the CNBC website, and I just said sector ETFs. And sure enough, we have, I think this is like 25, let's see, sectors. Yeah, 25 sector-based ETFs, and we will construct some optimal portfolios for those and see what happens. So we need to grab some price data, and for that, we're gonna use OpenBB. Uh, OpenBB is a, a pretty incredible library. Uh, you can find out more at openbb.co. Um, they've got plenty of solutions. They've got Terminal Pro, which is a Bloomberg-like product. They've got an add-in. They've got the Copilot, which is a bring-your-own LLM uh, model that reads the context of the uh, financial window in Terminal Pro, the financial data in Terminal Pro, and then OpenBB Platform, which is the Python SDK. Uh, that is what we are using now. So that is done, and you can see that we have a data frame, 91,000 rows, with all of the asset values inside. So we need to actually do one piece of manipulation here and convert this row-wise data to a, a columnar-wise. So we're gonna take the closing price uh, for each of the symbols, and essentially what we end up with is uh, the prices in each column, okay? So this is a perfect data frame to work with. You can see we've got 3,416 rows, so like you know, 15 years or so of data. So let's use the prices to return uh, method we got from SK Folio to do exactly that. And very simply, we now have, instead of price data, we have returns. So these are the daily returns of each of these assets. We're now going to use the scikit-learn method, uh, train, test, split. And we're gonna split this return data into training and testing sets without reshuffling. So we're not gonna reshuffle these data. Uh, they are as is, just split into a couple different data frames. And we can see that we have the train data, which is 2011 through March 2022, so 2,288 rows of data, and then our test data, which is 1,100 rows. So it's about two-thirds to one-third split. As you can see here, we have the test size one-third. So that's exactly what it is. All right, so let's start creating some portfolios with SK Folio. The first portfolio we're gonna create is this maximum diversification. And the way we do this is literally three lines of code. Uh, we create the model, we just instantiate the model right from the library. We then fit the model with the training data and we predict, we use the, uh, sorry, the, the, the test data and then we, sorry, the train data and then we use the prediction on that training data as well. So what do we end up with? Let's see this maximum diversification object directly from SK Folio. So nothing that we can really use for now. Let's create an equal weighted portfolio following the same method and then finally we'll create a random a uh, randomized portfolio as well. Okay, so we can actually have a method on these each of these objects, uh, PTF model train, PTF bench train, and PTF random train, and then you call dot diversification, and it gives you this kind of diversification score. And under the hood, SK Folio does all this math for us. If you wanna read more about how SK Folio does that, you can say SK diversification score. 
And you have this, all the documentation here will explain what is actually happening under the hood, okay? So we're using the uh, standard mean risk optimization here. We have all sorts of different measures that we can include, and there's plenty of examples, okay? All right, so now that we have the diversification scores, uh, we can plainly see that the maximum diversification model has the highest level of diversification, okay? So now we can actually predict the portfolio composition using our out of sample test data, and it just takes a second. And let's create a single population object with the, um, this is an SK folio object, with all of these results from our test data into a single, a single object. And you can see it takes a list, and now we have this population object, which again, doesn't tell us much, but we can actually start to do things with the population object. So if we say DIR, you can see all the, me the methods that we have on this, DI, uh, this population object, including composition, uh, max measure, measures mean standard deviation, and then we've got these plots, and that's what we're looking for. So first, let's plot the composition of all the portfolios, and voila, you see over on the right, this is a plotly chart. You can see on the right, we have our, uh, our 25 sector-based ETFs, and then you can see the weights, how we are actually weighting those ETFs in each of the portfolio types. So the maximum diversification portfolio is heavily weighted in XLU, whereas the equal weighted portfolio, not surprisingly, is equally, equally weighted at 4% 4, 4 times 25 assets, 100%. And then the random will give us a random portfolio composition. If you were to rerun this, then you would have a different random composition every time. Now, the important thing is let's see our returns. And SK Folio gives us a uh, plot cumulative returns. And there we have it. We can see that the maximum diversification portfolio actually underperforms a randomly weighted portfolio, which that was super surprising to me. Uh, and the equal weighted portfolio actually outperforms the most. Now, how much you explain this? Well, there's the whole concept of risk contribution here that we're not necessarily touching on in a equally weighted portfolio. If you think about an equally weighted dollar equal weight portfolio, there's going to be the highest risky, the riskiest assets are going to dominate the dynamics of that portfolio. Meaning that if you have a very risky volatile asset proxy for risk, that usually will drive the most returns. And that's probably what we're seeing. We're probably seeing an equal weight into assets that have a high risk contribution. And since we've been in a, a general bull market, that's contributing to the most uh, return, which is why we're seeing this kind of outperformance in the equally weighted portfolio. Uh, pretty cool, uh, very easy to run in SK Folio, and then we can actually get a summary and print out the statistics uh, for each of these mean, uh, excuse me, risk measures for each of the portfolios. So the maximum diversification, equal weighted and random, We've got the mean return, annualized mean return. You can see clearly that the equally weighted portfolio is the winner. The variance, all these semi-variances. So this is like the variance of downside returns. Uh, you've got some of these kind of academic method, uh, methods. So entropy value at risk. This is conditional value risk. This is a very common risk measure. Um, max drawdown. So all pretty good drawdowns. Uh, actually, sorry, I was looking at the wrong row. 40%. That's about as much as you will ever want to deal with in a drawdown. That's kind of the heuristic I follow. You've got the ulcer index. You've got lots of <laughs> lots of statistics here. I was looking for the sharp ratio. So sharp ratios actually are not that great um, given the uh, standard deviation of the returns here, okay? But nonetheless, uh, very, very cool library to do lots of uh, portfolio optimization work. And as you can see, it's like one line of code. Um, I've actually written about this library in the newsletter, which you can read here. It goes through in much more detail kind of the, the, the logic behind what we're doing, and it gives you the code that you can then copy and paste right into your own notebooks. Thanks for joining. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.